We're taking a little week for my birthday and for a friend's birthday. We're in Marquette, Michigan right now, and we're going to Paradise, and we're going to Mackinac Island. I'm going to do some rock hunting and some Uperlite hunting, so it should be a really fun week. Pretty excited to be here in the UP, and I don't know if I've ever talked about my history with wine. I am a treasure finder, but I used to own a winery. And so whenever my husband and I go on trips, we always stop at wineries. So we are at the Uper Winery and we're going to check out what kind of wines they have here. So here it is, the Uper Winery. Those trophies, yeah, those trophies those look familiar. familiar. Yeah, we were the last of the fruit wines to win, so we declare ourselves champion of the <laughs> <laughs> So you were talking about the Uper Stuper being a tight your your wine. Well, I'm a big beachcomber. That's what this channel is for, and I would think that a Uper Stuper would be somebody that was stooping, stooping down, down looking at at rocks <laughs> and then when your back is sore then you go oh, and you. then you have this duper stupor right <laughs> bye bye well that was fun we always tell people that we used to own a winery and we get extra special yeah, treatment yeah we aren't oh he gave us a discount wow and he gave us some glassware Wow. Okay, we always buy wine from local wineries and we always support them and they treat us really well. So if you're ever in Menominee, Michigan, come to the Uper Winery. Can anyone guess where I am right now? I'm in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. If you don't know this, I'm from Michigan and we are actually maybe moving back to Michigan. So it's very exciting to be here we're taking a little week for my birthday and for a friend's birthday we're in marquette michigan right now and we're going to paradise and we're going to mackinac island i'm going to do some rock hunting and some uperlite hunting so it should be a really fun week there is a fly hatch going on right now <laughs> which i hate if you know this about me i don't know if you can see the flies but that happens that happens I'm going to take this beautiful walk here in Marquette and see what we can find up ahead. This is so beautiful. This is right in the town of Marquette, right off of the bike trail that runs through town. There's a little rope swing right here and this sweet little river coming through here. And up there is a little swing you can sit on, dip your feet in the water. But in the summer it's just amazing. It's June right now but it's only in the 50s so I'll stay out of the water. I bet that water is ice cold. But what a wonderful little spot here. We're at Presque Isle Park in Marquette. Woo! Look at that. Wow. <laughs> don't, don't get too close. <laughs> it's <a> long ways down. <laughs> Woo. Beautiful. Ryan and I really had a whirlwind trip through Marquette. We only spent one night in Marquette. We stayed at a really nice Fairfield Inn right in town. And we went to Presque Isle Park to check out the rocks. The water was freezing cold, so I didn't really do any rock picking here, but Marquette is absolutely beautiful and I would highly recommend visiting. After we toured around the nature a little bit, we went out to dinner at a place called the Delft, and it used to be a theater in Marquette, and now it is a restaurant. And so you have your dinner and they have a large screen movie theater inside that sort of plays quietly, but it's a really interesting and fun place to have dinner in Marquette. We had 
a really fun day in Marquette and the next day we took off for Grand Marais and Paradise. Because our time was limited on this trip, we went straight to Grand Marais in Paradise because I had booked a place to stay there for two days. And my idea was to go beachcombing in Grand Marais and beachcombing at Whitefish Point. If you are going to the UP for any length of time and you have time, definitely don't bypass Autrain and Munising. Those are really great places. There's waterfalls and, and lots to do at the Pictured Rock National Lakeshore. So don't miss those places. We have just been to those areas many, many times. So on this trip, we skipped those, but they are definitely a big highlight of the UP and I wouldn't miss them if I had not ever been there before. So here is the beach in Grand Marais and this was the middle of June and I have to say there was very little that was open in town in Grand Marais. Grand Marais is not a big town by any means, but we were just trying to have lunch and we finally, uh, I think one of the places finally opened up at noon and um, there was a lot of people trying to find a place to go to lunch and nothing was open. So whether it was so early in the season or they just didn't have any help, nothing was really open. So just keep that in mind if you go earlier or later in the season, you might not find very many amenities in Grand Marais, but the rock picking here is fantastic. Another place nearby to Grand Marais, which we did not go, it's actually closer to Whitefish Point, I believe, is Crisp Point, and that is a place I have yet to go, and I'm hoping to get there. It's a little bit of a rough drive from what I understand. It's mouth of the Two-Hearted River, and apparently it's a 20 miles, I think, of kind of rough road, and I didn't really want to deal with that on this trip, so we didn't go, but it's supposed to be a great place to go rock picking. Our next stop was Whitefish Point, and this is the lighthouse up at Whitefish Point. The main reason why we decided to go here is one, the rock picking is fantastic, and they also have this newly found stone called the Uperlite, and I had all the equipment, the flashlights and whatnot to do that. But the night that we were going to go, you have to go at night, and it gets really dark late in the summer in Michigan, past 10 o'clock. And the night that we had planned to go, we were waiting and waiting to go Uper light hunting. And you'll see later in our footage that we just got a terrible storm that came through. And it wasn't just a short storm. It, it lasted most of the night and we lost power and it was a really bad storm. So I, we didn't get to go Uper light hunting, which I'm so disappointed that we didn't get a chance to do that. But I have the equipment. And so next time we get out here to Whitefish Bay, we will definitely try to look for the Uper lights, but this time it was a fail. But the rock picking at this beach is just amazing and it's absolutely beautiful. I could spend hours and hours at Whitefish Point. I'm standing here today at the very tip of Whitefish Point on the edge of Lake Superior, just north of Paradise. Today is Wednesday, June 15th. Uh, Chris's birthday was yesterday, the Traveling Treasure Finder. One of the things, as you know, she loves to do is rock hunt and shell hunt. So uh, we've decided to come up here, spend a few days in the UP and do just that. You want to tell us what you found? Well, this is quartz, obviously. And this I don't know. I'm studying my geology, so I might be able to report it. Okay. That was cool. Another reason that we chose Paradise to stay on this little trip 
other than the fact that it's so close to Whitefish Point, it's also really close to Tequamanon Falls State Park. And Tequamanon Falls is a beautiful waterfall area and it has a lot of hiking trails and it's absolutely beautiful. There's not a lot of places to stay in Paradise. That being said, we found a cute little lodge. It was called the Tequamanon Suites. It was just a little efficiency kitchen type place and it was perfectly fine for the two nights that we were there other than the storm that came through that we lost power. But if you do like to hike and if you like to see waterfalls, make sure that you stop at Tequamanon Falls. It's definitely worth it. There's a lodge there with a restaurant and brewery if you like to do that. It's just a really beautiful place to visit. What's the name of this trail? We're on the river trail? River? Tequamanon River Trail. Right now we just left the Upper Falls area. And we're not going to hike quite down to the Lower Falls because that's about eight miles round trip. And I don't want to do eight miles today. But we're going to cover about five. We have beer to drink. Yes. There's a brewery right here at the park. How convenient. So is that the mama or the baby up there? Mama bear. She's got cubs nearby, so the DNR said not to get any closer. If you don't follow our other channel, Good Life Highway, you might not know that my husband and I really like to picnic. Picnicking is kind of our thing and we have this picnic packed and we were gonna we just hiked to Quamanon Falls And we got a marine warning about a storm coming in. I don't know if you can tell from the Video here that the sky is getting really dark here. If I go over this way It's a little bit lighter. We decided we were gonna go take a lovely picnic at the beach and because of this storm coming in we decided that we're gonna have a little picnic right here. Hi, it's my husband Ryan. Yeah, we just thought, yeah, we love our picnics. So we weren't gonna give that up, but at least here we're under some shelter when this storm hits. So let's see, what do we got? Ooh, okay, that's what's coming. It's gonna clip us. So, so we're gonna take a break for a while and have some Yeah, so let's, hit, let's set this picnic up. Yeah, we were going to be at the beach. We didn't want to bring any glass on the beach. And we have some Wisconsin, some jalapeno Wisconsin cheese curds. We have some lovely New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. We always have wine with our picnics. You can judge if you want. We have some hummus and some veggies and some fruit. None of which he'll eat. We got some smoked whitefish sausage, bought locally here in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. That's about it. And Ryan will eat the meat and cheese and I'll <laughs> have all the rest of the stuff. We're having our picnic here. And the we can hear the thunder starting. I'm gonna see a front coming in here. <laughs> I told Ryan we need to document our last moments on Earth. Woo! So we just lost power in the hotel and Ryan is standing outside but it was getting really windy and kind of wet so I came back in so I'm just laying here in bed in the dark hotel watching this weather come through. The next day we got up early and drove down to St. Ignace and hopped on a ferry to Mackinac Island. You can get to Mackinac Island either by ferry, boat, or plane. I'm not sure if there's any other ways to get there. You can't get there by car because there's no motorized vehicles at all on the island except for emergency vehicles 
and we took the Shufflers ferry. That's what we usually take, but there's at least one other ferry line. You don't necessarily need to make a reservation, but we did. Most of the time you can just walk on. The ferries go pretty much all day, every day. Not as often in the off season, but pretty frequently during the summer. We decided to sit below deck on our ferry ride over because it was a really windy day and I didn't really want to get wet up on top. Turns out it, the people didn't get too wet, but they warned us it might be kind of wet up there, so we stayed below. It's a really quick and easy ferry ride over to the island. Once you get to the island, your bags are taken to your resort, depending on where you're staying. We stayed at the beautiful Chippewa Hotel, which is sort of an icon in town, and it is home to the Pink Pony and we had a really good time at this hotel. It is right in the thick of town, definitely. It's not a quiet place to stay. It's quiet at night, but it's not real quiet during the day. And here's a little glimpse of what Mackinac, the main town of Mackinac looks like. All of the bikes. You can rent bikes on the island, obviously, and I'll talk more about that in a little bit. We were on Mackinac in June. The lilacs were in bloom. It was absolutely beautiful. As a matter of fact, I think that Mackinac Island has a lilac festival. I'm not exactly sure when that is, but you can check their website. It's a really beautiful time to be there. It is pretty crowded because this is probably the first weekend that schools are out, so it was pretty crowded, but not unbearable. It was a really beautiful time to come. It was pleasantly cool, yet sunny and it was lovely with all of the blooms. Since we were on Mackinac for a friend's birthday party, the people that they invited were sort of trickling in all weekend, and so Ryan and I took the opportunity to walk around the island. Everybody was sort of doing their own things initially when we first got there, and Ryan actually went and played a round of golf, and I took off on foot by myself. In retrospect, I wish I had rented a bike that day and rode around the island because I could have done some more rock picking. We did ride completely around the island the next day and I'll show you footage of that, but I didn't have time to do any rock picking because we were with some other folks who weren't interested in such activities. So the neat thing about Mackinac Island is there's lots of ways to get around, even though there's no vehicular traffic. Here, obviously on foot is a great way and you can rent bikes in town. It's not super cheap. It's about $75 a day for 24 hours to rent a bike. You can also rent by the hour and you can also rent a horse. You can take a trolley pulled by a horse. They call them taxis too. So, there's lots of ways to get around, but it is up on a hill. So if you stay right down in town, it's all flat. But if you want to venture out where there's less crowds and beautiful homes and other wonderful things to see, then you're going to have to plan on putting in some miles on your feet. So when I was in high school, I came up here with a friend and I stayed in one of these bluff cottages and I just can't for the life of me remember which one it was. They're very historical. A lot of wealthy families lived in these homes. And as you can see, I'm still climbing up and up and up. I've been climbing up for about 15 minutes. Still climbing up. But the views from the top are spectacular and definitely worth it. These tours go on everywhere all day. Horse-drawn carriage tours. Of course, the highlight of coming to Mackinac Island is the Fort Mackinac, but I'm not gonna go this time because I've been many times in the past, but it's definitely worth touring. Wonderful history, very, interesting tour. 
and just a really cool thing to visit. Just couldn't resist filming this home right here. This is the back of it. Wow. This is the West Bluff up behind the Grant Hotel. Simply stunning. That house has clouds painted on their porch. This place is incredible. Straight ahead is the Grand Hotel coming in the back way. I don't know if I'm going to get stopped. I'll report in, but look at this view. It's the Mackinac Bridge in the distance. Weekends are very crowded on the island. It's absolutely packed here today, though you wouldn't know it where I'm walking. Most of the people stay right down in town, and the more adventurous people wander out farther. These sweet little houses right behind the Grand Hotel. I'm going to share with you a little nugget here that the Grand Hotel probably wouldn't want me to share. But if you walk all the way around, I was on foot this whole day and I came in to the Grand Hotel from this end, which is the other end of the iconic porch at the Grand Hotel. And if you want to go on the porch of the Grand Hotel, there is a fee. I think it's $10 or more if you're not staying at the Grand Hotel and it's absolutely beautiful and you can sit out there and the views are amazing and you can have cocktails on that patio but if you are riding your bike up to the grand hotel from the other side you cannot ride your bike in front of the grand hotel they will actually stop you and tell you that you can't ride your bike up in this area right here so but if you come around the backside and walk you can walk in front of the Grand Hotel. And I don't know if they assume that you're staying there if you're walking in from this direction or what, but I was not approached or stopped at all when I was walking in this direction. I did not go up onto the porch. I know some people who have gone up onto the porch from this direction. I'm not saying to do that because I didn't and I probably wouldn't, but um, I do know people who have. And this is coming up to the front entrance of the Grand Hotel. If you do want to have a really big splurge, at least it was a splurge for us, we have stayed here. We stayed here for our anniversary weekend a few years ago, and it was definitely worth it. The Grand Hotel is absolutely amazing inside. It's like stepping back into time. It reminds me of sort of like the Titanic on land. It's it's so incredible inside. But this is looking out over the front lawn of the Grand Hotel and there's a beautiful pool and it's just a really amazing visit. is the carriage museum just behind the Grand Hotel. As you may know, there's no motor vehicles on Mackinac. So this is sort of the history of all of the carriages that have been used on the island. And then you can also go visit the stables, which we'll do in a minute.
love old cemeteries. I think Ryan humors me by coming to cemeteries, but I love them. And the lilacs are in bloom here in Mackinac right now, so it's absolutely beautiful. I wish I could, I wish we had smell-o-vision. Very cool. Mary Biddle, oldest known grave in the cemetery. On our last day on the island, we rented bikes and a small group of us rode all the way around the island. It's really an easy ride. It's about eight miles, but it's entirely flat. There's maybe one or two little inclines, but almost anybody can ride around the island. We had a gentleman with us who was in his 70s and he did well. He got a little bit tired, but he did well. And as you can see, there are some places to stop and look for stones. Unfortunately, because I was with these folks, I didn't take the time to do it, but I couldn't help getting off my bike and just enjoying the beautiful wind and waves. It was so beautiful that weekend. And another thing when you're riding around, if you're looking for rocks, there is a lot of parts of the island that were rebuilt um, with riprap because of the high lake levels that happened a couple of years back. So there used to be, you can see here in this photo, the riprap, there used to be more beach and now there's a little bit less beach because they had to refurbish parts of the island. But we had a really nice time with our friends. We celebrated with a bottle of champagne and we had a picnic and we also that evening had a really nice dinner at a place called the Iroquois Hotel. If you want a splurge dinner, I highly recommend the Iroquois Hotel for the food and the atmosphere. It was absolutely wonderful. So these are the rocks that I found in the UP after our little excursion. Some really cool fossils. I wish I knew the names more of the rock. This is probably some type of a granite. Uh, I love this one. It's so cool. Just beautiful, beautiful colors. Tons of quartz, really, really pretty quartz pieces. This is green, it's hard to tell, but... So I also just love really cool, simple black ones. This is like the scarlet letter. So yeah, fun haul there. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Richard. Happy birthday to you. All right. Yes. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed this tour, this whirlwind tour of the Upper Peninsula of Michigan and Mackinac Island. And if you have any questions, please leave them down in the comment section below. And if you take a minute to like and subscribe to my channel, that would be wonderful. And I will see you on the beach somewhere.